I think for it, not recording. So now it's been recorded. I'm recording. So again, so that this appears in, in the video, K is a finite extension of QP, X is a proper smooth and geometrically connected variety. And I'm talking about Lichtenbaum's paper from 1961, where he defined the non-degenerate pairing between the Picard group and the Bauer group of X when X has occurred. And his paper can be summarized in, with uh, using two big diagrams, well, not too big, just four columns. Here's the Picard functor. And uh, there's a zero here because H, there's an H3 coming. This, the, the top row usually is deduced from a, um, it's deduced from a uh, spectral sequence argument. And usually what comes in here is the, is the geometric, uh, I mean, the, the algebraic Brouwer group. But in the case of a proper curve, uh, this is coincides with the whole group, okay? And uh, so here we, I got the right uh, diagram this time. So uh, this is the index. Here we have the dual. This is a isomorphism uh, from local class field theory. Here we have thick star means uh, from dragon dual. And here we have x zero x star. Okay, that's one diagram. And the second diagram that allows me to summarize the whole paper by Lichtenbaum. So this one, so this one is an isomorphism, and this is called Roquette's theorem. Okay, this is a uh, class field theory. Uh, this one, I'm going to show you that this is an isomorphism by considering the second diagram. Delta prime is the period. So I have one, take zero here, H1, K, pick, zero. And this zero comes from the fact that the neuron severic group is that. So H1 of, usually this comes H1 of uh, the neuron severic, but this in this case is zero. So there's no neuron severic contribu contribution there. And this one, so I have take zero, here, algebraically equivalent to zero, take zero x. Here's from dragon dual. This is usual, this is essentially, here the Picard is the, the Jacobian. So this is an, uh, an abelian variety. So this is uh, just take local variety. And um, here we have, and this one is an isomorphism, isomorphism, and I need this to be an isomorphism because I use it here. And this one is the period, and for reasons that I'll try to explain later, I call this Tice theorem. In, in fact, it's a particular case of a theorem of Kai. Wataru Kai, who is attending the talk today, he stayed up late and talk in uh, Japan, somewhere in Japan, it's 10 p.m., past 10 p.m., so, that's very nice. He's a very nice guy. He uh, is attending the talk in spite of the late hour. Okay, so so this is uh, the way I summarize uh, Lichtenbaum's paper. Uh, so because of uh, take local tank duality in uh, this particular case of Kai's theorem, this one is an isomorphism, and therefore this one is an isomorphism. This one is an isomorphism by local class field theory. This is Roquette's theorem, and therefore this is an isomorphism. And then I get the uh, uh, Lichtenbaum's pair. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is generalize this uh, theorem. Yeah, but uh, of course someone already did something like this. In fact, a lot by Hamel in 2004. So I'm going to talk about um, the work of Van Hamel now. Okay, so and so I have to. I'm going to mention Van Hamel, who um, did uh, did this in 2004, and he generalized Lichtenbaum duality. So he generalized. Lichtenbaum. To what settings? 
So, um, to uh, dimension, same as before, X is, X is proper and smooth and um, geometrically connected, but in this, uh, what by Hamel did, he worked uh, with arbitrary dimensions, in arbitrary dimensions. Okay, not, not curves, but uh, you know, any variety of any dimension. Always over a piatic field. Okay, almost over a piatic field. And he constructed uh, a non degenerate pair that generalizes Lichtenbaum's pair. And, but here, the Picard group is not relevant anymore. The group that you need is a group that Van Hamel called um, uh, pseudo-motivic homology, but um, I call this, I think it's appropriate to call this Van Hamel homology group. And that measures zero. You can find a whole theory uh, of Van Hamel homology homology in, in any dimension. So this is H0. So this group is a little mysterious, but I, I'll uh, put it in context related to other groups that are better known. Okay, so, and so I use a nice diagram. I have the child group here. I have Van Hamel homology, it's in degree zero. You have the Albanese scheme. Uh, the Albanese scheme there's a can be defined in, in this case. So there's a degree map here. This one is also endowed with a degree map. And of course, the child zero because uh, x is proper. The degree map on zero cycles passes through the quotient. So so have uh, degree maps all over the place. And this guy. It's an isomorphism in dimension one. If X has dimension one, then it's an isomorphism. Um, and this one is an isomorphism if the field is algebraically closed. Okay, and this map is usually called the Albanese map. So it's, it sits in between. Chao zero and the Albanese, which are uh, well-known groups, familiar. So, Van Hamel homology in degree zero sits in between. And Van Hamel proved that the, the, the duality, actually there is a need here to, com to complete. To, this pattern is non-degenerate, but to make it perfect, you have to use the pro-finite completion. Okay, but let's not worry about pro-finite completion because otherwise it's, it's, that will be too technical. So I'll just... Uh, worry about non-degenerate there. It's not necessarily perfect. Okay, so, and how did uh, Van Hamel define his homology? He uses, he works on the small smooth side over K and he uh, defines a complex. So this is for all, all degrees. Uh, this is a complex in, concentrated in degree in negative degrees. So that's the reason for the H minus there. So this complex is a little scary. It's a derived uh, direct image uh, homomorphism, I mean, X. Okay. So here we have the higher push forward, GMX, GMK. So that's the definition. It's a complex. Uh, he works in the, in the derived category over this side. So KSM is the small smooth side. And he worked on this side. Why did he work on this side? Uh, because um, this, this group, so this, uh, this sheaf, I'm sorry, this sheaf okay, can be non torsion. Can you recall what is the side? Is it the smooth K schemes equipped with the, yes. the tau topology or which topology? The smooth, the smooth topology. So he, uh, KSM is, uh, so smooth, smooth schemes over K. He doesn't want to include singular varieties over K. He just works with smooth, uh, and with uh, coverings are smooth maps. Subjective says, smooth maps. Yeah, yeah. Coverings are smooth maps. So he says, Actually, 
there, there's no real difference that you can consider your child topology also. No, I understand. I understand. Yeah, yeah. But the, the important thing is, is the, the, the underlying category. He doesn't want to include singular because this, this uh, sheet for, uh, for, larger, for Q larger than two, uh, if X is singular. So, so this is important for me because I'm trying to generalize this to singular varieties. Okay. So this can be, he says, actually Van Hamel says, the only reason I use the small smooth side and not the big flat side is because of this problem. Because for large Q, uh, I can have uh, non-torsion uh, sheaves. And for that, I do not know a, a duality here. So the duality uh, is usually, in this case, is you know, built out of uh, torsion sheaves. Know, homology of torsion sheaves, and then if you have something that's really big, then, then you have a problem. Okay, so that's the reason why he he restricted to that side, and which is I have to change that. Okay, and so there in are what, See, excuse me. In what you quoted before concerning his paper, X was a proper smooth, like in your talk, or it was proper and not necessarily smooth. No, it was proper and smooth. Uh, Van Hamel worked with proper and smooth all. all yeah, so okay. And the Albanese, just the universal mapping property. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this Albanese is the usual Albanese for proper, proper and smooth. And so this Albanese scheme, this is a, an extension of the Albanese variety by, by Z. Okay. Yeah. So, so there are no, no weird things, no big things, no, no lattices, uh, anything like that. Just Z. So this is a very, very tame situation, very nice. And, but I'm trying to generalize this to um, to singular, so so I have to I have to allow non non smooth, and so, but the, Van Hamel himself uh, provided or suggested a solution to this problem because Van Hamel um, one two three uh, Van Hamel a um, provided a solution because he also defined, not in the same paper, but in another paper, yeah, a, uh, a truncated version of all this. This truncated version allows me to get rid of, to kick out these problems, okay? So not work with K two or larger. So the truncated version of his homology, uh, he used this in a paper, uh, discussing severe varieties and also in his documenta paper on key, I don't remember, the elementary obstruction or something like that. And so we still have, now I can change to the large site, the flat site. So here the, uh, the, the schemes are, are local and finite type over K and flat. Well, the K is a field, so flat doesn't apply. So, uh, I mean, this is superfluous. So it's local and finite type with the FPP topology. The coverings are you know, flat mass and so forth. So this is a, a much larger site. And he considered a truncated version of the complex, truncated CX tau. And this one, uh, oops, where are my uh, erasers out here? And so this one is very similar to the big to the original. Now we work over the big flat, but I truncate this complex. So okay, so that's a truncated version. And uh, and Van Hamel defined a pairing from the truncated homology in degree zero to the truncated Brouwer group. And this truncated Brouwer group is not, none other than the algebraic Brouwer group. So this is the kernel of Brouwer X to Brouwer XS. And one could, you know, one could argue that actually what Lichtenbaum did actually what he did was obtain a duality theorem for the algebraic prior group, but you know, for a perfect curve, you don't see it because it's a zero by uh, theorem of property, very old theorem. 
And so, you know, everything agrees. So, but here I have, since I'm truncated, I don't have to worry about this problem. So I can include singular varieties. So the, this definition is completely formal. In fact, um, this could be viewed as the derived dual of the so-called units Picard complex, which I had, which was introduced by Gora Roy and Van Hamel also, and which I had to work with in a, in a previous paper. So this is actually mm, technically complicated because it uses the unit Picard complex and it's the dual. So, you know, there's a lot of work to be done there to clarify that relation. But anyways, we have a pairing. This one is, uh, this one is uh, non degenerate for smooth and proper in the context of, uh, you know, by Hamlet context, smooth and proper varieties. And I want to prove that it's really uh, still uh, a um, non-degenerate non pairing, even, even if it's a singular or some singular varieties. So this is work in progress. I don't have, I have no theorems of mine to show you this time. Okay, just, just, it's, uh, you know, telling you, trying to tell you what I, I want to do and what the technical complica complications are and, and the, the underlying beauty to all this. You, I hope to show you that. It's very exciting. It's very difficult technically, very complicated. But, uh, you know, we love math anyway, even though it's difficult. Okay. And, and so this group, first of all, this group uh, have something written down here. This group is always torsion and uh, and uh, so forth. In this group, the truncated, um, the truncated uh, by Hamel homology has formal properties similar to those of the untruncated version. So it still sits in, there's also a degree map. There's also a degree map, oops, sorry, degree. There's also a degree map. Uh, okay. And um, so I'm going to make a definition. Define M larger than zero by an exact sequence. So here are the Van Hamel homology truncated classes of degree zero. I have to find a name for that. So I have the truncated version, the degree map, and this one is uh, ZMZ. So that's the definition of M. So M is the smallest possible degree of an element here. That's all. But I need that because I'm going to dualize that exact sequence to form the bottom sequence of, a, of an exact and commutative diagram. Ooh, yep. Zero tau star zero. Okay. And here I have the Picard excess gamma Picard Brow K Brower algebraic H one. K pick zero. And again, the zero is because we're over a periodic field, and H3 that comes in there is usually zero. So this here I have, I can define that map. I mean, I, I, I can prove eventually that it's an isomorphism. This one is an isomorphism, as in the curved case. And this one is probably an isomorphism. But I have to show it, uh, have, still have to check that. So this is Roquette's field. That should be Roquette's theorem. Okay. <clears throat> so that's uh, an analogous, an analog of the diagram uh, that I, you know, drew at the beginning of the talk. And so I want to prove that this one is uh, an injection or an isomorphism. Maybe I have to complete before for final completion in order to make it uh, uh, a perfect duality. But maybe in the case I'll consider, I think uh, this one is already pro-finite in the, in the case, in the examples that I will be given. 
So, and I'm going to assume now, so I'm going to drop the smoothness. X is proper uh, and geometrically reduced. No, uh, it's not a good idea to, to demand that it's geometrically connected because certain construction, for technical reasons, certain constructions uh, force upon you the non non reducible price, not geometrically reduced, redu uh, uh, not geometrically reducible. No? They split up. So, so X is proper and geometrically reduced. And but uh, in here, I'm still working. I'm still working. K is still pi. Okay. So I'm still working in characteristic characteristic zero. Characteristic zero. And so, luckily, Geyser. Thomas Geyser uh, determined completely uh, determined the structure of the Picard scheme. In this case, if actually in more general cases, if k if k is perfect, so this is the case because I'm in characteristic zero. Geyser determined the structure of pick. If k is perfect, and so his theorem, and so let me, um, there exists. So what he did, one of the things that he did, that's the only one that I need here. Uh, there exists an exact sequence of local algebraic groups, look, meaning locally finite groups over k. Um, so this one is a unipotent group. Here I have the Picard. And here I have the Picard of the semi-normalization of, of X. So the semi-normalization of X is a scheme in between X and the normalization that it has uh, it actually is the, the initial object in the category of schemes that are universally homeomorphic to the X. And also that this, that uh, that map induces anisomorphisms on all look on all resi residue fields. So Geyser calls it strongly universally homeomorphic, something like that. Yeah, I think that's the terminology that he uses. So X is n. So this one is is uh, this one could be very ugly. And this is less ugly. Uh, the singularities they're still singular, but the singularities are not so bad. For instance, uh, this example comes from a paper by Brion. Uh, not this example, but this 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 uh, remark that you know this uh, a, a node a curve with a node is semi-normal, but a curve with a cusp with a cusp is not. So this one is uh, semi-normal. This one is not in the case of curve. So, anyways, there's there's a procedure to obtain uh, to x. There's a procedure to attach to X the semi-normalization. In this one, this procedure um, commutes with separable extensions of the field. So if the field is perfect, then this is going to be geometrically semi-normal. So it's going to be semi-normal over KS. But that's because of perfectness of this, because the field is perfect. Okay, so, and so you can see now when the, the field is not is not perfect, it's imperfect. We might have some problems. And in fact, we do. That uh, the semi normalization of X is not going to be geometrically semi normal. And so, and that's uh, the problem. But uh, I, I feel. Do you claim, excuse me. Do you claim that the Picard of X maps onto the Picard of the semi normalization? Uh, that's what uh, it's written in, in uh, Geiss's paper. But this seems to be surprising in. Uh, in uh, in high dimension because the, you can think of like a semi-normalization is a smooth projective variety and then you can somehow uh, do some kind of uh, uh, like constructing the thing with the cast but uh, the idea is that you well maybe it is complicated to take time from your talk but uh, it, it seems to be uh, not clear uh, well, Maybe I can look in the paper, but I, I, it, it doesn't seem to me. Uh, 
doesn't strike you as it, well, well, this is the whole, this is the whole Picard functor. I mean, the whole Picard scheme. It is not, this is not probably not true if you take the Picard varieties. No, 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 but it, it, it says that you can lift that any line bundle on X SN descends to a line bundle on X, which seems to be a strong, even over an algebraically closed field, it seems to be a strong uh, statement uh, in, uh, in general to believe uh, it. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing. Uh, the theorem, let me see if I, I'm getting the, the hypothesis right. This is a theorem two from Geiser's paper, and he assumes that X is proper and reduced. So I'm assuming geometrically reduced. And uh, I think that's it. And in part one of that theorem is this statement. And uh, I still have to check all the details of the proof. But uh, I hope this has been checked thoroughly. Uh, and uh, I trust Geyser's ability. He's, uh, you know, I don't think he makes many mistakes. You know? So, but anyway, we'll have to, we have to uh, check the proof. It might be a little surprising, yeah. Maybe it is a little surprising. But anyways, that's what the statement says. And uh, so assuming that that's correct, assuming that that's correct, um, and well, with this, using that, and uh, one of my previous diagrams, um, I can, uh, you know, very, uh, it can be shown that the Brouwer, the algebraic Brouwer of X is the same as the algebraic Brouwer of the semi-normalization. Okay, so I can assume that the X is semi-normal. Um, so we can assume now that X is proper, reduced, semi-normal. In this case, because I'm in characteristic zero, this theorem was, uh, this is a, a, a remark or a theorem or a proposition by Brion, but this one is a, sorry, semi-normal, is a semi-abelian variety. Because this is, in, uh, over a perfect field, this is geometrically semi-normal. So let me put the theorem, Brion's theory, theorem in, in for any field. Okay. So Brion showed, Brion proved over any k. Uh, the following, uh, if X is geometrically semi-normal, then the Picard variety, uh, meaning uh, actually this is, the Picard variety is, is the, the largest smooth, closed smooth sub uh, subgroup here of the uh, connected. So this is the same in, in, uh, over perfect. I guess this is the same as taking just the reduced, but uh, over a uh, positive characteristic. In perfect field, we have we have to take this smooth uh, this construction yeah. from from the uh, Conrad uh, Gaber Prasad uh, book. Okay. So so this one is a semi abelian semi abelian variety. So so. So here we have over over a periodic field, we have a semi-abelian variety here, a unipotent group, and this is uh, essentially uh, gives you the structure of the Picard uh, of the Picard uh, scheme. So oh, excuse but, me again, when you write Brouwer one x equal to Brouwer one x s n, is it a theorem or a definition? No, it's a theorem. But it's a conclusion. I mean, it can be derived from uh, you know one of my diagrams because because uh, this one, so my proof is not the most elegant because I just compared the, the, the vertical arrows of a diagram. So this one and this one uh, do not change if X is replaced by Xn. Okay, so I can, I can show, I can verify that this one uh, Bit, bit, all, all, always working over perfect, okay? K perfect, so we have to be careful. So when K is perfect, I can show by a little lemma that this one does not change. This doesn't either uh, because, you know, I have a, a even characteristic zero, I'm even working over a periodic. So this is a unipotent, a unipotent group over a periodic field. So H1 of that is gonna be zero, okay? Actually, H, HI of this one is zero. So you see that this cohomology is the same as this cohomology, the cohomology of Aga. 
So these do not change. And then, and then I take my big diagram, see that all the, the arrow verticals are, are, are isomorphic, isomorphisms, except this one. So this one has to be true. So, it's, so uh, let, let me return again to your claim. So suppose you take the following kind of X, you take a, a curve of sinus G, and then you take a, 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 you make a cast by, a, take some closed point, a sort of an algebraically closed field and, uh, and, uh, and uh, replace the local ring by a sub ring so that you get a cusp singularity. Then you take a surface, which is the, the curve is the singularity across your curve. And then you study the, the Picard group of this. So a line bundle of this restricts to a line bundle fiber wise. So it gives a map from the Picard group of this to maps from the curve of the singularity to the, to the Picard group of the, of the curve, uh, uh, of the smooth curve. But now what, what I say is that, so the semi-normalization is just the curve cross itself. And then it has this diagonal divisor, the, the diagonal. But I claim that this, this, is, this doesn't descend to pick X over K, because something in pick over X over K will give you a map from the singular curve to the Picard scheme of the non-singular thing. But, but, but I, I know that for, I mean, for large genus, it's the curve embeds into the Picard. So it kind of, the map doesn't factorize through this contraction. So it seems that, oh, that this exact sequence is not correct uh, for surfaces. This one. And, and so, uh, and then the rest, which, which uses it also shouldn't be correct, I think. So, so you, you think that this sequence is not correct? So, it, it, so okay. that I mean, just, uh, it, it seems to be that some assumption is missing because it is clear for, for in dimension one yeah. by, by cohomological dimension easily that this map is surjective because a divisor can be moved away from the singularities and so on. But then the, in, in dimension two already, just by considering the, Product of a smooth curve is, I mean, what, what I said that you have a, that in the product situation, you have a map from the peak to the home from the base to the peak of the fiber, mm -hmm. which is uh, somehow, anyway, you have a description of the peak of the product in terms of, of this and other things. So, so you, you can see that the, that the, it is, that the map is not, uh, is, it seems to me you can see easily the map is not surjective on, on, uh, on K oh, point. Yes, yes, so, I, I, I understand that there are some concerns here. Uh, look, I have an idea. I don't, I don't know if you have the time, but uh, could you please write down this example and send it to me like uh, in a week from today, when you, whenever you have the time, and then I can look at it, you know, in the quiet of my room, you know, nobody uh, interrupted me, very con concentrate on that example, and then also check everything from Geiser's paper and see what's the deal okay this is important you know it's important if you, if you think that there is a problem here then it's important that i know about it because uh, i cannot go on if there's a, something that i don't understand okay so so please offer uh, send me that example if you can type it up if you are not too busy all right please you send it to me and i'll you know try to understand all your arguments which are but can you give the reference of geyser uh, yeah, this is the paper in Compositio. Uh, uh, and you have the, have the exact roof, uh, volume here. My trusty tablet. Let me see. So let me see where I have Geyser's paper here. Geyser Picard. So this one is a paper. It's called, so Geyser. The affine part of the Picard scheme. Uh, and this is in Compositio Uno, 145, and this was published in 2009. And pages 415, 422. Okay, okay, no, I can find it easily, but then. Uh... Yeah. It, yes, actually, this paper, I, I think uh, Brion used this paper to generalize uh, something like this using some pinching methods. I mean, it, it actually, over in, in a relative situation. So, also, you might also want to look at Brion's paper on which deals with uh, the question of which, which groups are Picard varieties or something like that, which algebraic groups are Picard varieties. 
So that paper is also very important because Brion works in uh, greater generality and he works in a relative setting and uses right. tension, you know? So, and, and so he has a, a sequence like this one um, in, over a more, in a more general situation. And the, what is the reference of Brion's paper? Oops, that's a, uh, that's a tricky one. Uh, let me see. Uh, I must have it here. You know, I have read all these papers. I have to read them again, of course, until I understand them. Uh, so let's see. Um, Jesus, maybe I have a problem because maybe I just downloaded it. And, and so there's no name to it. There's just a, a bunch of numbers. So um, I think I'll send it to you. I'll send you the reference by uh, email. What about that? After okay. today, today I'm going to send you this uh, paper by okay. Brown. So if we, if there's a problem and we find the problem when we fix it, that's how math works, you know? And um, I think I once published a, 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 an erroneous claim, but luckily it wasn't, it was in, inconsequential and I could repair it. And uh, just not issues, so I helped you with it. Uh, so, so people can make mistakes. I, can, I have made mistakes, and but we fix them, and that's how math uh, moves forward. All right. So, um, okay. And and so the, uh, here, in, in assuming that this is correct and characteristic zero, or actually over any perfect field, then the situation is the the structure of the Picard scheme is more or less. Uh, it's not too difficult. Uh, now the problem is, uh, what happens if k is a local function field? Oh, um, I think I um, I promised to give a a diagram before I, I before I, I do this before I pass to the function field case. Uh, let me uh, give you a diagram that I think uh, should. Um, allow me to uh, prove, to generalize, uh, to generalize uh, my Hamel's, uh, my Hamel duality sum singular, or the proper and singular, right. Uh, I already, actually I erased this, I shouldn't have, but, um, so that, this is one of the diagrams, this generalizes the first diagram that I, uh, through in this talk, the very first one. So I'm going to write it again. So to, to make the connection with the, with the beginning of the talk. All right, that's one diagram and the other one, that's number one and number two. So this one, remember that the, in, in the curve case, there was the Z over delta prime Z, which where delta prime was the period. Here, uh, we have something a little more complicated in higher dimensions. very. I'm going to tell you in a second what phi, uh, phi x is, or phi x. Uh, this one, I, I, I believe, is a theorem, and this is Chi's theorem. Or a more general version of it. Chi's theorem, um, here I have h1, k, x0. Uh, all right, H, H1, um, pick zero, H1, pick. And here we have, unfortunately, the neuron severi group is not, it's not, uh, I mean, the homology is not zero anymore, but fortunately we have here uh, local, uh, take, uh, duality and what to take duality. For finally generated a 
of course, in a generalized version because maybe, well, I'm still working over Piatic, okay? I haven't moved to local function field. So this is character, characteristic zero. So here everything, and this what you take duality is the usual one. And X is smooth now? Uh, nope. X is just proper, X is proper possible singular. But still, the K is Piatic. Still characteristic zero. Um, so this one is H zero, X, Z, degree zero. So I have a homology in degree zero. But um, this one is no longer an abelian variety. So here I need Harari Samoli duality for one motives, the lean one motives. So this M is the dual one motive for this. Um, so here I can assume, let me see. Let me see if I get my, um, my hypothesis right. I don't wanna make any mistake. Uh, maybe here I need to assume that, um, maybe I want this to be a semi abelian variety. So perhaps I, hear, I need to assume here that X is semi normal. Since we're in character, characteristic zero, it's the same as the geometrically semi normal. So you will need to assume prop uh, smooth. We we'll still get the, here um, a semi abelian variety. And this one, M, is the uh, one motive. So this one, M, is uh, here we have H1, X, S, Z. This is zero if X is normal, but not in general. And here we have the dual of the abelian part. So this is the albanese, the albanese of the normalization. That's the abelian variety part of that one. The dual, so this has an abelian variety part in the, which is, should be the same as the Picard when X is normal. And so you take the, the dual and you get the albanese variety. That's a one motive. So here you need, and this is an isomorphism over Piatic by a theorem of Harari and Samoli. And um, so phi x is just this map, the map that in, uh, actually should be, um, yeah, that's the map. And so we get here a duality and uh, why do I call it Chi's theorem? Because uh, Chi and Wataru Chi proved that this is an isomorphism on, under certain additional conditions. Uh, and I believe in those, uh, under those conditions, the Albanese map that goes from Chow zero to H zero X Z Tau to the Albanese, I, I believe this one in his setting, this is an isomorphism. So actually he proved that the, um, he proved that I think he proved that the um, co-kernel of this map, which, which he called the Albanese co-kernel is naturally dual to this one. And so maybe in, I think in his case, in Wataru case and Wataru Kai's uh, setting, this is an isomorphism. He had to assume that the X had a certain model whose Picard uh, was uh, smooth and under those conditions, uh, you get his theorem, but it should be more general. It should be something like this where uh, actually the right thing to look at is not uh, this map, but uh, uh, this map. So Van Hamel homology is the, the one that does the grip, not Chow zero. So you have to move to uh, change your outlook. Uh, use um, Van Hamel's ideas. That's my opinion anyway. And uh, all this needs to be checked. Of course, there are many, many uh, technical things. In the last 10 minutes, I need to talk about the uh, local function field, okay? And um, I hope, um, well, uh, all I can do here because I haven't even started uh, the dealing with the technical difficulties. So, but at least I can give you some, uh, make some comments and maybe you can help me out and, and you know, offer some suggestions or, or whatever, you know, or just criticize the whole thing, <laughs> which is also a possibility. So, uh, 
Okay, so last 10 minutes, 10 or 12 minutes, something like that. So uh, K is a local function field. And the problem with this one, so, so where is the problem? Where is the problem with local function fields? That um, if X is semi-normal, And so over K, if X is semi-normal over K, uh, it can happen that um, X is not semi-normal over some field extension. It's not geometrically. Let's put it that way. There are examples where X is semi-normal over K, but X is not geometrically semi-normal. So, um, so the problem is that uh, if, if X where geometrically semi-normal, then I can use, then I can use uh, Brion's theorem. So this is semi-abelian variety. So I know the structure if X is geometrically semi-normal. If X is geometrically semi-normal, then uh, I'm happy because I know the structure of this guy. But the problem is that, as I say, um, there are uh, in positive characteristic over imperfect fields, there are varieties that are uh, even regular over K that are not geometrically semi-normal, that can gain a cusp over some extension field. And, and so those examples have been discussed before by Rosenlicht many years ago in the 50s, and they, they, were, uh, they were considered again in the KMT, a KMT book, Tam uh, Tamayashi, Miyanichi, and Takeuchi on unipotent groups also. Uh, and the same example then were considered by Osterle, Osterle, and then by Totaro more recently, when he dis when he introduced the pseudo opinion, uh, the pseudo, yeah, the pseudo opinion varieties. That, I'm right, pseudo opinion varieties. So, so, um, so I have a problem here because you know, I'll give you one example. I'll give you one example. When that, hap when that happens, you, that you may be well aware of or familiar with. But anyways, let me, let me say, uh, assume that, uh, so I have a problem. Assume that X is semi or even regular. Assume X is semi-normal. Assume X is semi-normal. Um, the following result is true. Uh, at least this is in, in the Stacks project for when semi-normal is replaced by normal. If X is semi-normal, and then there exists a pure inseparable, pure inseparable extension, such that <clears throat> uh, purely, there exists a purely inseparable extension such that the semi-normalization of the phase change is geometrically semi-normal. This should be true. It is true for normal. I haven't checked the proof in, in the stacks project, project yet, but it, it should be true. And so, so you know, all, not I mean, all all is not lost. I mean, there is some some hope because then to. Um, then to try to get at the structure of the Picard, because I need that in order to get the Duali theorem. So you mean a finite purely inseparable extension? Uh, yeah, yes, yes, sorry, yeah. Uh, otherwise, we would just go to the perfection, right? Uh, finite. Yeah, so it just says that the semi normalization of the perfection descends, which is clear, yes. Yeah, uh, there are some finite things, purely inseparable. That's nice. So, and, and, and so, and so I have, I have this, and so I, I can consider this situation, okay? And um, this guy is going to be geometrically semi-normal, so semi-normal. So here I have 
I have some hope. Because this guy is, um, this guy is a semi variety by Brion Spear. And so I have a map from this guy, which I would like to know. But actually, what I want to know is the Picard over K. So I have K prime here. I have to, I have to move up. And so, so uh, probably the kernel of this one may be as in the case in, uh, in Geiser's paper. Maybe this one is unipotent. The kernel is unipotent. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm betting on that. That, uh, you know, I don't, maybe it's a K1 group, a K prime one group. I mean, it's not a split uh, unipotent, K1. Yeah. Anyways, but it should be a unipotent. And this one is a semi abelian <clears throat> So, I it is not clear that the kernel is, in this case, uh, it is not clear that the group is smooth, I think. No, no, I'll yeah, of yeah. course, oh, sorry. sorry no, but the okay. kernel, the okay. kernel doesn't have to be smooth, I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, maybe, maybe this map is not smooth, and maybe this guy is not smooth. Uh, I, I don't know. Kernel tends to be smooth. Mm -hmm. But that, uh, you know, I'm taking, uh, I don't know if this, this map is smooth. Uh, but anyways, even this guy's going maybe unipotent and maybe non-smooth. Um, but anyways, we still have some. Uh, it's not you know I can still take this the smooth part of this guy and maybe since I only care about the cohomology, maybe the quotient will, will be you know infinitesimal in Galois cohomology of that. I don't care. It just vanishes. So, so I mean that's not too. I don't think that's a technical a serious technical problem. No, the technical problem comes in here because I, I'm over K prime and I want to come down to K. So X. And so I have to, to consider this closed inversion. Okay, so many restrictions along purely inseparables. And so I have to, to, to see how this guy sits in here. And this one is going to be an extent, it should be an extension of a semi abelian by a unipotent, maybe no non smooth unipotent. But uh, this is what I was thinking about yesterday. I'm sorry, I haven't gotten any further ahead, you know, in order to give you some, some theorems, but maybe I can give another talk three months from now. You know, hopefully, I will eventually find out what the, the structure of this guy is in, in there. Uh, and finally, an example. Okay, so th these are my technical difficulties right now. But you know, see, th th many people have worked on this stuff. I mean, there's a whole book by Con uh, the book I just mentioned uh, uh, 10, 5, 15 minutes ago, you know, where there's a lot of material there, uh, technical material that I can use. Uh, this concept comes from that book, you know, and also the, the papers by Brion that also, you know, are helpful. And so maybe, you know, connecting all these sources, uh, I can get somewhere. So that's the hope, anyway. So can one get those? Uh, uh, th there is this paper of Totaro on pseudo abelian, on pseudo abelian varieties. So those are uh, not quite an extension of abelian varieties by, I mean, so so they are not extension of abelian by unipotent. But oh. so can one get pseudo abelian things in this Picard story uh, or? Uh, well, this one, well, this one, this one is going to be. This one is going to be. Uh, a regular semi abelian variety, right? Over this, I'm talking K prime and semi normalization. But yeah, then, okay, but no, but I'm okay. Uh... Yeah, yeah, but you have to take the bay restriction then. So the bay restriction of a torus is, is a, a pseudo reductive, right? Commuted is pseudo, re, pseudo reductive. And this guy, the, the this one, the bay mm -hmm. restriction, the bay restriction of this guy is a pseudo abelian. Uh, variety of a, of a certain type. It's a total pseudo abelian variety of a certain type. Yeah, but you see, I, I have to find I have to find the maximal abelian sub variety of this guy embedded maybe in here or you know. So it's not clear that. Uh, so see, oh, this is just uh, the situation. It's, it's, you have to see how this guy sits in there. You know, this maybe this here you will find maybe you will find. A, a totaro pseudo billion variety of this type, a uh, bay restriction, you know, bay restriction, maybe, I don't know. But 
like very restriction of an abelian variety. You know, the, the Raynaud examples. You know, but then I have to find the the abelian sub variety of this guy, the maximal abelian that embeds in here. Maybe it's not of the same type. It's not a it's a pseudo abelian variety, but it's not a, a, a very restriction. I don't know. See, this k prime could be of degree p, an extension of degree p. And the example, five minutes, five minutes. The example uh, to show you the uh, that actually the mystery lies in here. That is not a mystery. The mystery lies in here in this semi-normalization, the lack of, uh, uh, you know, the, the problem is that this, even if you start with a semi-normal, in fact, a regular, even more striking. I'm going to just find, consider this guy. Here we have, um, this is going to be a, uh, a, a Russell type group. So it's a spec. Ax, maybe I should write it just like the, the kernel of them. Anyway, this is going to be the kernel of a certain map from G A two to G A. So, so this guy is going to be uh, the kernel, and this is explicitly what what's the map. So here's the here's the the description x y. Uh, y cubed minus x minus t x cubed. I mean, characteristic three, plain and simple. And then I take the regular completion. So this is a pro, uh, compactification, regular compactification of completion. So this is going to be a proper, uh, even regular. So regular, uh, regular compactification of G. So this is, um, so I'm in the context of Russell's paper, 1970s. Um, so this one is shown, this, this uh, isomorphism, the Picard variety of C over K, C is regular, and the Picard is isomorphic to this K1 group. And it's a K1 group of dimension one. What did you say? Which kind of group is it? Uh, one of those uh, Russell type groups. Okay. Yeah, Russell. Uh, Peter. Peter Russell. Yeah. What is K1 here? K1. Uh, K1. Yeah. 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 I don't know how you pronounce this. See, I have read these words, but I haven't pronounced them ever. K wound, ah, K wound. Yes, K wound. Yes, K wound. But that's the right no, pronunciation, I think. I, maybe I didn't hear right. Uh, yeah, okay, sorry. Yeah, two more minutes. Three more minutes. I don't want to. I don't want to abuse your uh, patience. Okay. So, it's a K wound group, and um, in uh, Osterle, Osterle computed the. Uh, it's not, it's not difficult to compute H1 because you use this sequence, right? And the fact of H, these have trivial cohomology. So this guy is K over this subgroup. So that's an, it's an additive group modulo that uh, subgroup. And this is an infinite pre-torsion group. And and of course, uh, here the, the, the curve C has a regular, I mean, it has a rational point because this is the completion of a group, you know? So the index and the period are all one. So that's why there's a zero there. And the, uh, the algebraic prior group is the whole prior group. So here we have an example of a curve. <clears throat> this, this curve is regular, but if you view it over uh, the degree P extension, over K1 over P, <clears throat> then it acquires a cusp. So it's not geometrically semi-normal. Uh, it's not geometrically semi-normal. See, she has, I could call these <clears throat> uh, like potentially non-semi-normal, potentially non-semi-normal curves, something like that, that over some extension acquire a cusp. Anyways, or, or, or potentially cuspidal. Um, anyways, I can think about the names later. 
but see here the description and this very simple geno zero example uh, is is just <clears throat> I can in this example I can compute the Bravo group as an extension. This is infinite uh, free torsion. Here you have uh, this is Q over Z. And so so well that's an that's a nice example. The three torsion subgroup is uh, uh, rather big, and this guy is divisible. So this one is going to be uh, it's going to be a subjection. So this is almost the whole three torsion, except for this little guy. But this is infinite, infinite three torsion. Uh, well, that's the example I wanted to end the talk with. Thank you for your patience. Uh, I'm sorry if it didn't come out very nicely, but uh, I did my best, you know. Uh, preparing these talks helped me, a, preparing this talk helped me a lot. Because when you are doing something uh, and try to explain it to other people, you yourself understand it better. So, you know, it's, it, it was a, a great exercise to, to try to, uh, you know, write a talk that could be understandable for people who are not, uh, in, you know, embedded into the technicalities. Uh, anyways, I, I hope to uh, I hope to uh, make some progress, and maybe I'll just issue a preprint three months from now of something that may be a little more a little less ambitious. You know, maybe some smaller paper. That's how you start, you know, because these these problems are very difficult, and so you start little by little. Well, thanks for your attention. I hope it wasn't too bad. If there are any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer. Okay, many thanks. Uh, we can exchange emails, uh, offer. You send me your, if you have the time, you send me your counter examples and I'll mm. look it up, okay? And then try to understand what you write. And also check uh, Geiser's paper and all that, okay? Mm. Many thanks. Okay. I'll see you, bye. Mm. I hope you stay safe, but this virus is difficult, but not impossible.